Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. An all-too-common occurrence in East Tennessee, bears and humans crossing paths in unexpected places. Well, take a look here. It's famous. She's going to run right in this path. Yeah, a viewer by the name of Dean Shapiro sending us this video of a bear in the middle of downtown Gatlinburg. It's Shapiro, you heard, trying to warn someone away. Well, Shapiro says he visits Gatlinburg regularly, so it's not the first time he's, well, seen a bear show up in town. I've seen them behind the hotels and in the parking garages. I was up there for my son's birthday. I took him up there, and the bear came running out onto the boardwalk. I'm kind of glad I shot that video. At first it was out of amazement, but like I said, I'm glad it was shot because it shows that they're being forced to come into human population. Yeah, Matt Cameron with TWRA says this is the time of year you'll see more bears as they look for excess food and prepare for fall and winter. But other than it being in the middle of town, it, it acted normal to me. You know, it was looking around and once again looking for a place where it could just get away from all these people. It didn't feel comfortable where it was at. Um, and a lot of times when you surround an animal like that and you corner it, it can attack. Cameron's advice in this sort of situation, don't try to track down the bear to get a good view. Just back away, giving the bear an escape route. This bear was able to escape the crowds, but TWRA does add if a bear is a danger to the community, they will try to relocate it, but relocation doesn't always work, and wildlife agents might have to euthanize the bear. Tonight, I were suspected in a deadly wreck able to get out of jail. Shannon Walker allowed to post bond while he waits for a grand jury on whether his case can now move forward. Now, we showed you Walker yesterday in court for a preliminary hearing. Prosecutors calling two KPD officers, a witness and a firefighter to describe their experiences during and after the crash, which ended with Walker's arrest and charges of DUI and vehicular homicide. One investigator saying a substance believed to be heroin was found in the car. Police say on August 21st, Walker was behind the wheel when his car went off the road along Kingston Pike near Thimbleberry Road in Concord Street, hitting and killing a pedestrian on the sidewalk before coming then to a stop at the entrance to a church. All this happening not far from the UT campus. According to court records, police say Walker had been found that same day, passed out in a vehicle, treated with the overdose antidote Narcan, checking himself out of the hospital within an hour of the crash. Killed in that collision, 24-year-old Ben Kredich, son of UT swimming and diving program director. Now, we learned today from a spokesperson for the Knox County District Attorney's Office about the condition of Walker's release. He'll have to wear an ankle bracelet monitoring for alcohol. Also, Walker will have to go through drug testing. Of course, we'll follow the next steps as a grand jury decides what's next for Walker. All right, our next big story, a standoff now over. The concerned call to 911 coming from a person inside one of the units at the Terra Hills Apartments. This was around 1045 this morning. That's on Edinburgh Lane, south of Emory Valley Road. Now, the man who police thought might have a gun giving up after talking with Oak Ridge crisis negotiators. Matter of fact, you can see all the officers out, including those negotiators. Uh, Oak Ridge police were there, SWAT officers as well. The suspect, who police at one point said they believe had a gun surrendering right around 12 or 245. Officers shared his name, Glenn Duncan. We're told he is a 28-year-old from Oak Ridge. Tonight, Duncan is at the Anderson County Detention Center. Now, he's accused of threatening family members with violence. Our crisis negotiation team did a, did a wonderful job uh, diffusing the situation. Uh, they were able to talk to him via phone and eventually uh, get him to uh, step outside and give himself up. Oak Ridge police say they found a gun inside the apartment. Other people in the apartment building had to leave during the standoff. Duncan faces charges of aggravated domestic assault and possession of a prohibited weapon. A big trouble for an East Tennessee teen at a recent high school football game. He's accused of bringing marijuana and a pistol to a game last week. According to the Blount County Sheriff's Office, SROs working security at the Heritage High School game on Friday smelled marijuana coming from a group of people near the entrance to the field. After questioning them, we're told 18-year-old Isaiah Bowman admitted to having a joint. The SRO searched him and found 18 grams of weed and a small 9-millimeter pistol in his fanny pack. 
Bowman was arrested and now faces charges for possession and delivery of drugs and bringing a firearm on school property. Moving down our list to a big answer decades in the making. The TBI's latest success in using DNA and genealogy connecting this childhood picture you see here with a set of bones found in Cumberland County. Now, this is the only picture family members have of Kenneth Thompson taken when he was a child in 1983. He was dead, killed at some point in his late teens. Now, for decades, all forensic pathologists could say was that the skeleton was likely that of a black male aged 20 to 25 who had been stabbed several times. Even DNA samples taken in 2007 did not close the case until the TBI's Unidentified Human Remains Initiative, sending a sample of the remains to a Texas lab at the end of last year, which led investigators to Thompson's family in Detroit, Michigan. I've seen a, a huge amount of success from this program. Um, again, this technology, um, this strategy of dealing with these, these types of cases and trying to, to identify um, victims of crimes, uh, it, it's, it's just been a game changer. And usually in this case, a suspect was not only identified in this case after the remains were found, but that person later pled guilty to second degree murder in a plea deal for a 20 year sentence. Meanwhile, the body of a man found in Douglas Lake in Dandridge last week has now been identified as 37-year-old Chucky Jean Barker. Barker, who was known to stay with people in Jefferson and Cock Counties, was last seen in Newport back on August 26th. Now, he was driving a 1991 black Dodge Dakota truck with red pinstripes that still has yet to be found. If you see a truck matching that description or know anything about what happened to Barker, you are asked to please call this phone number, 865-475-9411. It is officially football time in Tennessee, and with close to 100,000 fans, they'll be making their way to town this weekend for the home opener. Along with them, Visit Knoxville says they're going to be bringing a large economic boost for local businesses and, of course, the city of Knoxville. I think we we're expecting magic this season, quite honestly. I mean, last year was so awesome. You know, we felt all the energy that used to come from years of football past, so to speak. And I think we're just going to ride that energy into this season. If you know folks coming into town for any of the home games, keep this in mind. Might want to pass this along if they haven't already booked a hotel. We're told some hotels are already booked for most of the home games this season. University releasing the game day schedule this morning. We are told Vol Village opens at 1.30. The Vol Walk steps off at 2.45 this Saturday. Gates open at 3 at Neyland, leading up to kickoff against Austin P, which is set for 5 p.m.